Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instructions on completing the task at hand. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. Starting off at the shop, I'm going to do a timing belt. I think this may be an 05 S60. We're going to do it their way and pull a harmonic balancer. Makes it easier. And I'm going to start off by pulling this wheel off. Then I'm going to go up top and pull the covers off. The front cover so I can align the timing. Pulled the wheel off. I opened up this splash guard, I put the bolt right back on the nut, on the stem, so I don't lose it. And now I'm going to lower the car and pull the top cover off, the front cover off. You pull your stabilizer out of the way, two bolts here, two bolts on the other side, and that bolt in the middle. So I'm going to pull that, lift that stabilizer out of the way. These bolts are 14 on each side, the middle one 18, 18. And you gotta undo this little clip here so you don't bust it before you lift that out. Now I go ahead and lift that out of the way. Next you lift this cluster of things out of the way so you can get to that 10 millimeter front cover bolt there. You unhook your line here and be ready to pull some of this out. And I'm gonna go ahead and drain the um, coolant out of the system since I'm doing the water pump as well. Coolant drain should be right there, 13 millimeter. Coolant strainer, remove the cap, pop this hose loose, remove this hose. Now I can lift this bottle and power steering uh, reservoir up and out of the way so I can get that 10 millimeter out of there. You lift this up, be extra careful that you don't damage the wire for the sensor. So I would recommend unplugging that wire and then laying this on top of the engine so you can get that front cover off. The latch for that sensor plug is on the back here. I, they're hard for me so I pushed it in with a screwdriver, unplugged it, then I pushed everything up over the ridge. Now I'm going to get that 10 millimeter out, undo it, and then pull this cover off. You can grab it by the corners and work it up and out of the engine bay. Next, you want to pay special note to how this serpentine belt is routed. That could cause you a lot of pain and frustration if you don't know how it's routed when you go to put it back on. Then down there, right on this side of this belt, there's a T60. You break that loose by swinging the breaker bar um, toward the front of the cart, but you don't want to get your uh, tool stuck in there. So let me show you how I do it. All right, I connect the tool at 12 o'clock. I pull the tension off by hitting the front of the vehicle. I knock the belt off there at the tensioner roller, and then I let the tool swing back over toward the rear of the car to get it released but it's going to go really far so there you see the belts loose and this tool is going to go that far to get it back out so keep that in mind go ahead and remove the serpentine belt now that I have the bolt out of the cover go ahead and work it up and out now you see this vehicle has dual VVTs. If you don't have a cam seal leak and you're not planning on replacing those cam seals, there's no reason to mess with these VVTs. If you don't see oil residue or build up down there, again, there's no reason to mess with these VVT hubs. So there's no reason to use a locking tool on the back of them. Nonetheless, I got a notch there and I have a notch here. So I need to find the notch on the cam and get that aligned. So let me see if I can find the marks on this cam here. Okay, 
I have a mark right here at the tip of my finger. If you can see that, that's how faint it is. I got to align that there. So I'm going to put a 30 millimeter down there on the crank and turn that over and have the timing aligned. When I get one of these aligned, I can verify that the other two positions are aligned. And that is the exhaust cam and the crank down there. So I put the 30 millimeter on the crank. I turn it clockwise and I have my timing mark aligned there. I should have my timing mark there, aligned there. Better to see it from a different angle. And you could white out those if you want. And now you gotta get down there and check the mark on your crank. We'll verify that when I pull a harmonic ba balance. Timing aligned. I'm gonna go ahead and use this impact gun to knock this crank bolt loose. And we'll go from there. Bolt came right off, so we're gonna double check, make sure the timing didn't move. And it is still dead on the power of an impact wrench. All right, now I also use the impact gun to knock those four 10 millimeter bolts loose. So set those right where you set the nut, keep all that stuff together. Now, if the balancer doesn't come off, you wanna go up top and pry it uh, using the um, tensioner bolt to pry it. There's a pry bar there. So we're just gonna bump it to bump it loose and then uh, pull it off it from up top and it came right off and as you can see you got your four bolts and you got your pilot hole so that thing's going to only go on one way uh, it's got your retaining pin there and your four bolts so if you pull it off this way you don't need to take that lower guard off you can also inspect your crank seal real good when you get the belt loose if you have a cam locking tool now's the time to use it we do not so we are not going to Plus, these type of VVT hubs are not floating, so you can get them back on the marks and get the belt back on the mark. So, double check your marks, loosen your tensioner, and pull the belt off. Before you pull this tensioner off, pay close attention to where the tensioner adjuster is. If it's up here, when you adjust it, you'll probably have to adjust it clockwise. If it's down here where my finger is, like seven o'clock, you'll have to twist it counterclockwise to adjust the tension. So you got your bolt loose, you move your tensioner arm forward, get the belt loose, pull the belt off. Since you don't have a harmonic balancer, it comes right off. Finish removing that bolt and then take your idler off. You wanna replace this stuff if you're going over 100,000 miles with it. On this newer vehicle, the idler was on with 10 millimeter bolts. I set them there. The tensioner was on with a 12 millimeter. I set that there. They're not noisy, but this is a customer's car and they're uh, going to be replaced with a new kit. Looks like the serpentine belt is starting to get cracks as well. Might replace that. Now we're going to go ahead and pull the water pump. And it's got seven screws on it. They're 10 millimeter. Here's a little tip that I got from the mechanic when I was doing the timing belt job. If you want a little more room around your water pump area and getting that water pump in and out in that area cleaned up what you want to do is take your lower front mount remove these two bolts pry your engine up so that the lower bolt hole aligns with the upper hole on the mount put the screw in there that'll hold that engine up about an inch inch and a half and give you plenty of space to work on your water pump and then just put that stuff back now you want to do this after you get the harmonic balancer off if you're pulling that loose. We have the pump off. Just about all of the gasket came off. Tensioner off. Idler off. Ready to go back on with the replacement. Here's the pump that's coming off. It's got the year and the month. So as you see it's azing. Volvo's also on there and almost all the gas that came off with it. All right, I got it cleaned off. The mechanic here actually used a scotch brite pad to clean that off. So you wanna make sure that there's none of those fibers in here, but it did a pretty good job. I'm gonna get that top corner a little bit more, but the rest of it I'm gonna wipe off with a rag. It should be pretty close to ready to put the new gasket on in the new water pump. 
there it is all cleaned off ready for its new seal I wiped as much of that dust out of there as I could from that scotch bright pad looks like I got a little touch in that corner of my head and then I'm going to put this stuff on the seal and put it on I don't do that myself this is what they do now when you go to install your new pump you want to double check your length of the bolts that come with it you also want to check the thickness of the housing of your uh, water pump sometimes water pumps will have a different housing thickness than the other and you want to use the right size bolts you want to make sure they won't bottom out in the uh, block of the engine if you ever have any questions you can run a nail or something into the threaded area of the block pull it out see how long that is and then put that through your housing and compare the remaining depth with the screws that you're going to mount the water pump with also you want to make sure you have at least uh, probably that much teeth going into the engine to hold your water pump in place so there's probably six teeth at least half of the teeth area snug all your screws down uh, skipping around I, I go like three o'clock then I go eight o'clock then I go one o'clock then I go five o'clock you skip around on your bolts snug them all down then I always torque mine down to uh, 15 foot-pounds never had a problem with a leak I have the idler in place and torqued down I have the tensioner in place and snug as you can see it has a little uh, guide there that it hooks on to and I'm going to wash everything down before I put the belt on it make sure the belt has a nice clean surface to land on next I check my timing marks my intake cam mark is still good my exhaust cam mark is still good and my crank timing mark is still good get down there so you can see that crank mark Alright, I got everything washed down with brake parts cleaner. I'm going to sit and let it dry for a few minutes. And then I'm going to put the belt under the crank. Take slack out of it. Hook it on my cam here. Run it over to the exhaust cam there. And then run it down around the water pump. And then I'm going to release the tension off of the tensioner. And put the belt around the tensioner. I have the belt on. I have very little slack on the intake side on the idler roller. As you can see, that mark is still on. This mark here on the exhaust cam is still on. And of course, the crank that moves, so it's still on. So I'm going to adjust the tension, put in a Allen wrench in here, getting my arm lined up with the temperature in my bolt with my tensioner then I'm going to tighten this nut down and then roll it over by hand a few times. I put the allen wrench in there I adjusted it clockwise until the finger came up into the window then I torqued the bolt down now I'm going to put the harmonic balancer on roll it around a couple times and make sure my timing marks stay aligned Fired it up, made sure everything is rolling smooth in there and tracking right. Didn't have any cooling or anything, so you don't want to run it long. Just make sure the timing belt and everything is tracking. So we're going to shut it down and finish the install. All right, from here, you want to top up your coolant, put your serpentine bolt on, start the car, check it for leaks, top your coolant off. Then you want to put your cover on, put your engine mount brace back on, and you're all done. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.